want to call to order the meet uh, call the no, want to call to order the meeting of the Livingston Parish Ordinance Committee for Thursday, uh, June twenty seventh. Miss Sandy, would you call the roll? Mr. Mack, Mr. Harris, here. Mr. Wasson, here. Mr. Chopper, here. Uh, guys, we're going to talk about the review and discussion recommendations. Man, that's better. Of uh, the sewer treatment plan ordinance that we started talking about and didn't get very far two weeks ago uh, in the audience to help us tonight or kind of lead us, make some recommendations or talk about the history of why we're getting to this ordinance. Uh, two of the authors, which are Mr. Eddie Idell and Ms. Dara Lambert from uh, Alvin Fairburn Associates. So if y'all would like to come up and talk to us about what brought this about and, and maybe go through the condensed version and, and and if we could just give them some time and maybe write your questions down and then we could go back and start addressing this. Let's kind of get through what brought this about some of the high points, if y'all don't mind. Uh, Eddie Idell with Alvin Fairburn and Associates. First, I want to apologize for not being at y'all's last meeting. I told Mr. Gary I was going to be here and did not realize I was going to be out of town that whole week, so... Uh, Sorry about that. So I struggled, why, I struggled through it. I, I know you did. So why do you have a proposed ordinance in front of you? Uh, there's two real, two main reasons why we've brought this to you guys to look at and consider. Uh, as you may or may not know, the sewer district and even the city of Denver Springs has been uh, trying to do a lot of expansion to sewer parts of the parish that currently do not have access to community sewer. Uh, that was a learning experience. We learned about some, some pretty serious issues that we have in the parish. Uh, the sewer district went through and purchased a bunch of old mechanical plants. Some of them had been in operation for 35 years in Livingston Parish. And I'm not going to name any names, but they bought them from different uh, private operators. And some of these plants had never had power connected to the plant. So there was never any aeration taking place. So in some instances, you had raw sewer that had been draining into our canals for a long time. Uh, DEQ and EPA are the, the policemen for that. They're supposed to try to help prevent that from happening. In reality, LADEQ is a pretty small organization when you look at how large the state of Louisiana is and they're responsible for the whole state. So it, it is difficult for them to find those things and when they find them, it's even more difficult for them to do something about it. So what this ordinance would do is it would give the parish the authority to do something about it. When you find a serious issue that is a danger to public health and safety, this would give you the authority. If you had the means, if the parish had the means to do something, had some facilities in place to help correct it, you could do that. This would go a long ways toward giving you that power. Uh, so besides having community systems in the parish that were not needing permit, another issue that Mr. Bubba could appreciate is uh, when we are expanding, you don't have a mechanism to uh, get people to connect to the new system because you know sewer is really expensive to put in the ground and when you have an area of the, par of the parish that has a large enough population to where now it is feasible to put in sewer and have everybody connect to get the se old septic tanks and the old individual systems offline because the water quality from those is not nearly as good as you get from a, a well-run municipal regional Community facility. Right. You get a lot better water quality. This would also address that. It would, it would require those people to connect to the system. 
unless they were extenuating circumstances, that it would be too burdensome for an individual. It also gives you the power to grant waivers, all that stuff that's still in here. You know, because every once in a while there's a situation where it really doesn't make sense for you to make that person connect because it would it would be too costly or, or uh, maybe some other reason. So that that's the two things that this ordinance is going to address. Uh, the two major things is it's going to make it very difficult for a private utility sewer operator to not run a good clean ship. Uh, if he's going to be a, a sewer operator in Livingston Parish and we adopt this ordinance or something similar, he's going to have to reinvest in his plant and he's going to have to spend some money on it and he's going to have to make sure that he's meeting his permit. If he does that, this ordinance helps that private sewer operator too. In what way? Because if he's running a good uh, sewer treatment system and he's meeting his permit and he's reinvesting into that plant and adding capacity, that subdivision next door to him that has a system that's not operating, this ordinance gives the parish some authority to force that other operator that's not going, doing a good job to connect to the operator that is reinvesting in the community and trying to do a good job it benefits him too now the the if there's an operator out there that doesn't care what the water quality is from that plant he, he's not gonna like this at all it's gonna make it real difficult for him to operate in this parish. is that only for a, a, a multiple houses yeah, the, the only thing the, this the affects... Single MODAD or a single treatment plan for a single residence, that would not be affected? Is there's that, too many of those, to be honest with you, for so, us to so try to tackle. So that would be about being Right. That. Now, what this, what, what this currently addresses in this form would be the community systems where you have uh, 10, 20, or 50, or 500 people uh, uh, discharging to one plant. That community system, this this ordinance would regulate that uh, now it does regulate commercial too so if you have a restaurant that has a, a sewer treatment plant with a grease trap this this also gives the parish authority to inspect those and make sure that they're being operated properly and there is provisions in there for uh, dealing with people that won't fix their their plants like I said a restaurant would be a good example of that I mean, uh, and to be honest with you, to be honest with you, even though even though that's addressed, that probably is the most looked after part of the sewer deal already, because that is controlled by the local health unit. What, you know what the, the restaurant? The, the, the restaurant local situation. DHH, yeah, restaurants, schools, because we got we got least parish public schools that are on individual treatment plans. Like a single bodad or. A uh, well, well, it would a, be a bigger like plant, like a little 5,500-gallon-per-day uh, plant or something okay. like that. Be a, 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 so is there an operator that runs that? They, they have certified operators. So the school actually hires the operator to run that? Yeah. And, they would and this up. would regulate that, too. Now, you know, the school board, from what I've seen, they do a pretty good job. I mean, they just, sure. but, but there is going to be some commercial businesses out there that you're going to find that are going to need to uh, spend some money on their treatment plan because they're currently not in compliance. Uh, but it does not affect the individual single family home. The, the, the house with a septic tank, it doesn't, it, this doesn't regulate that. The, uh, the, the new double wide trailer with a new little mechanical plan, it doesn't regulate that. Okay, I, that. and I'll, I'll ask you a couple questions. I, I don't know if anybody else has any, but so our local DHH, they currently <coughs> inspect the restaurant type uh, discharge, discharge, correct? They do. So they go out and sample that? Uh, yeah. I, don't, I don't know the details of what all they do, but they do do the inspections of the facility itself to and they sure look at the aerated. grease trap and the treatment plant and all that. Look, look I, 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 I'm, I'm not an expert on this, but I, just had, I was just helping a constituent of mine that, that had a situation with the local DHH. A complaint was lodged against a particular retail establishment. DHH came out, 
he actually had a plan in that they had to, you know, license and said it would be whatever, uh, based on, you know, different criteria they had put together. Uh, but when the guy came out, I think the, the, the way the, the calculations they did based on what was put in it, meaning there was more, more water going through it than there were loadings in it, it wasn't actually operating properly, so he was getting some bad discharge. You know what I'm saying? So, in essence, they came out, saw the bad discharge, did not sample it, just said that it's not working properly. And, and you know, we, we worked together and got that kind of resolved. But, but what, it, what they did is he did not have a, was that a DEQ? He, had a, he did not have a DEQ permit D discharge he, uh, number. That, yeah, I don't think he had a discharge permit, that's right. So he ended up getting that, and DEQ told him what the new levels had to be met. So there, I mean, what I think this, in conjunction with what's going on, will solve some of those little issues. They basically, they basically, not to discount what they do, they go to a restaurant, they inspect it. If it has a licensed package unit in it, then they make sure it's, you know, to, to the best of their knowledge, working properly. I don't know. Do they have to sample those things monthly uh, well, or quarterly or the, how to, only if they have a they discharge are, permit? They are supposed to, as, as it could be just once annually, could be quarterly, depending right, on the depending size Right, depending on what the, the discharge unit. permit calls mm -hmm. them. But, but they the, are supposed to pull samples and report to DEQ. But, but this gives this, I know that sounds like a duplication in this particular situation, but it gives the parish, if and, there and, is a problem, the you, ability you're right. to. It is a duplication because like Gary's saying, the restaurants and stuff, local DHH inspects that. The big community plants is under the jurisdiction of DEQ, but there's been some pretty significant problems in Livingston Parish that have, they just not have been able to address them. With the, with the community? With the, with the big community. Okay, plan. Eddie, your, your experience, just, you can ballpark it, nobody's asking. You. Your experience, I know the city of Denham did an acquisition. I know what was Sewer District 2 at that point in time did acquisition. What percentage, if you had to take a wag at it, what percentage of those acquired plants actually were meeting their discharge numbers, if you had to guess? 20%. So we, I mean, I just think that, I mean, I think that's the problem we're looking at now. And I think, aren't we trying to put some numbers together of like the number of plants in the parish that actually are not under some kind of decree or some. Right. Cause what, what we're, uh, and, and another reason we're looking at that number Gary is because in whatever format you guys ultimately adopt an ordinance, uh, it's going to be something you're going to have to fund. Uh, we have a mechanism in here where uh, private sewer utility X, if he's got 100 customers, he's going to have to pay a franchise fee to the parish. The way it's set up in here now is $5 every quarter, so $20 a year per customer is a check that he would write to the parish that would, in my opinion, would be put into a fund to fund a department of two, three, four people, whatever it would take to, to do all of the inspections and plan review and uh, respond to complaints. So what, we'll, what, what we're going to do is give you as good a number as we can as to how many customers there are that are on private sewer utilities so we can back into a number and say, hey, you know what, it only needs to be $2 a customer. Or to fund a department, it looks like maybe it would need to be $8 a customer. So we're gonna, you know, if you if you guys are on board and want us to move forward, that's one of the well, next I, things. I think that, that this we is, that's why I kept talking about it's gonna be a long process. We're gonna what we need to do is discuss yeah. the, 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 the the problems, discuss the solutions. And once we come to some idea of how we need to do, then we gotta look at putting a budget together, figure out how many customers I mean you kinda gotta know how many customers you've got before you can address how big your staff has to be to sample and what those costs are. Then, then after you kind of develop a budget, then you got to theoretically back that number against those customers and determine out what the fee needs to be. Nobody's trying to make a profit on this. We're trying to just fund, you know, a, 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 a portion of government that, that, that obviously we need if 20% if, if of the package units in the parish are operating within the guidelines they're designed, then we've got 80% that are putting contaminated affluent 
in our ditches and canals, and that's that's the that's the thing that we're here trying to address. Do you have an idea of how many? Now, it, I I would say uh, plants. Just within the sewer district, there was another. This was several. This data is several Which years district? old. Uh, you know Sewer District 1 and 2 around Denham? Yeah. It's outside Denham? Yeah. Up to Watson. There was, uh, just south of the interstate, there was over 3,500 customers right there, just in that one portion of the parish. And they were all Now, that's there? probably the biggest port, biggest. So there could be another. One, one plant? One, no, several plants. That's, I guess, my question. How many different plants? Uh, John, you may be looking at because we would need to know that. Yeah, yeah, and we and that and we can find that information out, and and that's another way of determining what. It, uh, well, that's what we were talking about is finding out how many plants and how many customers total, private sewer customers there are in the parish. Okay, and and I guess but it, it could easily be five thousand customers. Okay, but the could distinction be is between public and private. Right. So, so you wouldn't inspect to say the city of Denham Springs or sewer, War II sewer? Not the not the city because that's outside of your jurisdiction. You know the city Springfield because those are in you know they're governed by their own little municipality. Right. Uh, but you know uh, and you know the sewer district is sub into the parish, so that's you guys in essence. You know, so would so. you still it's, would those would you be inspecting? Yeah, you uh, could. Sewer District 2? You could. You would have the authority. You would have the authority. Basically, I mean, I think Sewer District 2 probably has a little bit stri more stringent testing requirements. And, and yeah, they have to test monthly. Monthly so, and sure. submit. So, so mm -hmm. I mean, they're, but you could easily have somebody go in and review the tests that they're doing. To if you had out a complaint, you could send somebody So the city of Denham Sewer District 1, Denham Springs Sewer District 1 would be? Outside of the purview. Outside of that? Well, now, that's a good point. So District 1 which is, is outside, outside city limits, limits. Would, would, which would be in your, uh, probably within your jurisdiction. So they would need to be, even though their effluent goes. Even though their plant is inside, well, no, it's actually not even in the it's city. It's not in the city either. That's right. <laughs> But it, yeah. But you know, I we work for both of those guys, and that's trust me, that's not our. That's issues. not your fault. Yeah, though they're they're yeah, influent. Yeah. If everybody was half that good, we'd be in. I never did understand shape. that. How the city got to put the plant outside, outside the city? The well, I mean, it was it was it was just a matter of the. They had the old pond. Trying right? to find that much property in '82. Yeah. You know, probably yeah. you probably and, couldn't and, have found and, that and in the no, city. And, and, if they could put it there, there was no reason to annex it because then you got to annex a road and some other stuff to it. it doesn't necessarily mean. That would have been better for us. <laughs> but if you guys want, what I'll, I've, I've created a little three page condensed version and I can just hit the high points. And that's, you know, 90% of what's in here is on these three pages. And you can stop me and I'll answer some questions about each one if you want or go through it at the end, whatever you guys want. But I'll go through it as fast as I can and uh, try not to miss too much. So the first page, I'm not going to read it, but that number one through seven, in essence, that is why we're looking at this ordinance, is to do those things, is to, uh, is to better the parish, to better the environment, and to protect the public. Uh, because DEQ has showed us that they're they just can't get to it. They don't have the staff to do it. Uh, so, number one at the bottom, highlighted, everybody is responsible. So what that means is, in a lot of these subdivisions, uh, at least it used to be this way. They've kind of drifted away from it. But you may have a owner, which would have been the subdivision developer, that still owns the plant. And then he has an operator that he's hired to operate it. The owner and the operator are both responsible and both subject to the penalties associated with not complying with this ordinance. So it's not just the owner or just the operators, both of them. The way it's currently written. Second page. Uh, like I was saying, the franchise fees, currently we have it as five dollars per customer per quarter we can do some math and figure out can you do it with one dollar 
per quarter per customer or does it need to be 10? You know, we can, when we get to that point, we'll be able to come up with a pretty good approximation of what that number needs to be to be able to fund a department to administer the ordinance. Uh, all sewage infrastructure within the parish rights of ways or public servitudes shall belong to the parish. So we, typically right now you have a 50 or 60 foot public road right away in a subdivision and then you have a 15 foot public utility servitude on either side. Uh, what this is saying is that if that sewer main is in the road right away or in the your right. servitude, it belongs to you. Now, you know, one thing you're going to hear from some people is, well, you're trying to run private utility sewer operators out of the parish. No, we're not. We're not. But we are trying to make sure that they have a plant that meets permit. That's what this does. Uh, but it this does put a little more burden on the development team the subdivision developer in the beginning because he's got to make a decision does he want to own a sewer treatment plant or does he want to from the beginning give it to the parish so he's going to have to make that decision up front because if he wants to be in the sewer business he'll have to dedicate a separate private sewer servitude for that sewer main it this allows him to do it it doesn't prevent him from doing it but it makes him make that decision up front because if it gets in the public road right away or the public utility to serve it to, then it belongs to the parish. Uh, systems that are not in compliance, this is a big one, uh, will not have any additional connections. No building permits will be issued. So what that means is you may have a subdivision with a community sewer treatment plant that's being operated by utility operator X that's not meeting permit and the parish has informed him given him so much time to get it into compliance and he didn't so the next step would this ordinance would give the parish the authority to not issue any more building permits so those 20 lots left in that subdivision that don't have a house on them you're not going to have a house on them until they clean up their sewer treatment plant uh, so that's going to be a situation where you've got the You've got John Wascom owns the lot. He's trying to build a house. He can't get a building permit because utility company X won't fix the sewer treatment plant. So it's going to make the developer have some skin in the game. When used used to, we'd build, develop a subdivision, put a sewer treatment plant in, give it away to somebody. It wasn't our headache anymore. Under this ordinance, the developer. If he chooses to operate a private sewer treatment plant, he's going to have to stay in the game. He can't Otherwise, he can't afford for his subdivision to not be able to have lots sold because the operator isn't doing their job. He could give it away, couldn't he? He could give it to the parish, but he can't give it to another. If we this ordinance, the way it's currently written, his only option would be to keep it and operate it and run a, a sewer or utility. Or give it to someone who will keep it. In or order. give it to the parish. It well, doesn't allow him to give it to another private sewer operator. I guess that I'm confused there because if somebody has a track record of a history of do, doing their plants good, well and treating the sewer and discharging, and they go and want to, if it, they make a deal with the developer and says, look, you develop it and I will take it over and run it just like I run all the rest of mine. Very well, well. That, that, there's a, there's a, there could be a mechanism to allow that for sure. Uh, the first thing that comes to my mind is if it was a, another filing of a subdivision and sewer utility X is not meeting it is is complete it would be completely legal for him to expand his plant yeah. and to put the sewer in okay uh, to to cover those lots this doesn't prevent that from happening okay. but where you have a uh, where you have a new subdivision where the developer uh, is going to put in a new plant and new infrastructure, he, he would only have two choices to, to maintain ownership or to, to yeah, deed it to the parish. Now, he could, he could choose to hire somebody to operate it for him. I mean, he could still have the option of operating. So he would always be the owner is what you're saying? Yes. 
would always be the owner. The way it's written currently. I'm gonna keep you hear me say that. Okay. Time. I mean, and that we could we could tweak that if I. I and look, that's that. something you know that something I think that the attorney would probably need to look at too, from a yeah. legal standpoint. Okay, I didn't mean to slow you down. Did, did we pulled this from some of our neighboring parishes, and you know, I'm. In fact, he needs to look through the whole thing, obviously. Yeah, but okay. that that is probably one of the things that he would need to spend the most time looking at is and regulating the ability of a developer to deed that to some entity other than the but, parish. But John, I'm, realistically, if you go build a 200, if you're a developer and you go build a 200 lot subdivision, you're going to have a hard time giving away a plant that if that person doesn't operate properly can stop you from having your lot sold. Yeah, I mean, you understand what I'm talking about? You're going to want to maintain some control I believe they over, will. over how, the, how that thing is operated. Because you could, you, you could have a situation where a developer uh, builds all the infrastructure, deeds it to a utility operator. He gets halfway through building the lots, and that guy is not doing a good job of operating the plant. Now he has no control over it. He's done deeded the system away. So I think in the be I think the developers are gonna probably make the decision to maintain control or to try to give it to the parish, try to deed it to the parish. Uh, here's th this next one is gonna address an issue that you guys recently dealt with in Gravesbrier. Do y'all remember that? Where we had six eight years ago maybe i don't think i, I think I, that was a me that was in my district i don't know that oh, i thought before. we talked about it in front of council well, i don't know if we did or not but you can go ahead and explain it to them what happened well we had a situation in grays bar where the parish was fortunate to get some grant money to put in sewer and it was 100 people in there or so maybe 100 homes and we put in a lift new lift station tied it into the sewer district and uh did a we cleaned up that whole subdivision you know, because they had some bad problems with the old system that was in there. Sure. Well, uh, couldn't get everybody to connect. I don't know, there was, I think in the beginning there was 16 or 18 people that refused to connect to the sewer. Still dump it in the ditch? Into the old collection system, which was raw sewer, right. basically which had a bunch of holes in it, so it was getting into the ditch right, right. and into the stream that runs behind in. it. They would not tie and wouldn't spend the money, said they didn't have the money or wouldn't spend it. Uh, so you had a situation where just last year, there was a lady that did connect to the sewer, but she had raw sewer coming out mm -hmm. the ground and in front of her house in a sinkhole. From another house. From houses down the road that refused to, to get off of the old collection system and tie it to the new system. So what this next one does it, is it the way the ordinance is currently written is once you have public sewer on the road in front of your house or if a private sewer company expands and passes in front of your house, you have to connect to it. You don't have a choice. Is that a... Uh I know the state does that for 300 feet. The state says if you're within 300 feet, you have to connect. So this dovetails off of that. But the state... They don't enforce it? They don't enforce it. Maybe they don't have any mechanism to enforce it. This would give the parish some authority to enforce it. Again, when there's something that's too burdensome for someone... There's always room for variance. There, you, can, you, can, you can grant waivers when it makes sense to do so. Sure. But... but you know, guys, the, the days of uh, of having septic tanks have been over for a long time. Uh, and the days of having poorly operated little mechanical plants are, are short-lived, too. You know, we, we're progressing. I mean, parish-wide community sewer is where we need to be. Because I can tell you, in the not-too-distant future, the areas in the parish that don't have access to community sewer, you're not going to build a house on them you're definitely not going to build a subdivision. You're not going to build a new restaurant. If you don't have access to community sewer, you're not going to be able to do anything but cut the grass. That's where things are going. Because DEQ has already started uh, not issuing discharge permits. And, and it's not because they want to do that. 
when you have a stream like Gray's Creek or some of the Coyels that have an EPA uh, mandated order that says you can't increase the sewer load to it, DEQ doesn't have any option but to enforce that. Uh, I'm surprised that we hadn't had more serious red flags being waved uh, before now, but I can tell you it's, it's serious. And we are going to have to step up our game to be able to try to speed up getting parish-wide sewer uh, because there's going to be places that are undevelopable. Well, the, Ted, I have a question for you. Uh, you know what I'm fixing to bring up? All right, on grinder pump. You said the subdivisions are not going to be able to put in anything like that? Well, we talked, well, we were just, right now, that is a legal means, uh, Mr. Bubba, is you can use a low-pressure system. Uh, if it was going to be turned over to a private utility operator, they may allow that. The city of Denver Springs and the sewer district don't want to allow it. So if it's a system that was going to the sewer district, that they were going to deed it to the sewer district, the developer would not be allowed to because they already have that in their rules and regulations that they won't allow it. But from a state level, uh, Mr. Harris, they do still allow that. Yeah, I just, I, that's a bad situation that I have be. in my district. Yeah. And I hope I never see another one for the people's sake, not for me. but. And that's yeah. something that, that, you know, that we could address also. We could say, hey, other than for under individual purposes that you won't allow it. Yeah. for a developed subdivision. Well, that's something we need to do. That's something that you could certainly do. Because, I mean, they have realtors live in this one subdivision. And they say, I think y'all need shouldn't get rid of it. You, right now, just, you know, do away with it. Yeah. We would, but we'd have no other means of tying you in. Yeah, so. that's right. Yeah, because Eddie, Eddie kind of, you, you ballpark some numbers on that deal. That particular subject is pretty substantial. Isn't it? Yeah, it is. We're actually doing a good detailed cost assessment right now because I think they're going to put in some applications, see if they can get some grant money. But uh, So we're going to, I'll actually have a new estimate probably before the end of next week. Uh, the next one is what we've already talked about. The developers could not deed the community sewer systems to anyone other than the parish. They could certainly retain ownership of it. But if they were going to give it to somebody, it, had, it would have to be the parish. Uh, next page. So this, the way this ordinance is written is you, you could have a sewer operator out there that it just does not make financial sense for him to upgrade the plant. We do have some options where he could take that plant offline. And once the parish gets infrastructure in that area, he could connect to it and negotiate a rate with the parish uh, to treat the sewer for him. And he still maintains his customer base and still maintains ownership of the system. He just would no longer be discharging from his plant that probably isn't meeting permit. He'd so be discharging to the municipal. He'd be discharging into the public system. Into the public system. And he would pay a fee for that. A portion of his user fees he collects would be paid to the parish. So it, it does allow for that too. Uh, and that's what these next ones are about is the parish could accept untreated sewer. It could accept partially treated sewer uh, or any variation along those lines. Uh, like I said, we're not trying to put them out of business by any means, but we're trying to make sure that they run a good clean business. Uh, that their that their plants are meeting permit. Currently, the parish doesn't accept outside, do they? Or uh, right now, they there are, to my knowledge, neither the city nor the sewer the district has right. any situation where they accept uh, raw or treated. But it sewer. might be something we could should consider. Oh, I think it's something we certainly I mean, should if consider they, they because there's a bunch of sewer operators in this parish. That, you know? Yeah. yeah. That, and some of them do, they, they, they're trying to do a good job. Right. And, you know, we, we should have an option to where uh, they can stay in business, retain their customers, and we're still cleaning up the environment. Okay. So all of these plants are supposed to have a discharge permit, and they're all supposed to be reporting 
either monthly or quarterly or biannually or annually to DQ. What this does, it says that they also have to send those discharge permits to the parish for review. So that'll be the easiest way for our department to monitor these plants. They don't even have to go out and look at them. They can just look at those DMRs and when they see somebody hadn't met their permit limits for a couple of reporting periods, they can go check on them. What's going on? What's the problem? And uh, see what needs to be addressed and fixed. Community systems that do not comply with this ordinance will have 60 days to come into compliance. That's what, the or that's what this ordinance says. Now, when you have somebody that's wanting to come into compliance and it's going to take 120 days, you can give them 120 days. It doesn't, it doesn't prevent you from doing that. But the language in the ordinance says they got to do it in 60 days. If a community treatment system cannot be brought into compliance, and there is another private community treatment system or public system nearby, then you can require them to connect to it. So you may have two, two operators that each have a subdivision next door to each other. This guy won't spend any money and won't get into compliance, and this one has done a great job, and he's actually expanded the capacity of his plant. You, have the, you would have some authority to make him connect. Because he, you know, if he hadn't met his discharge permit in a year, we got a problem, you know, and we have a solution next door. So, like I was saying, this ordinance is going to reward those operators that are meeting their discharge permit and running a good, uh, clean sewer treatment facility for individuals. Now, this would be anybody me you whoever if there is a properly functioning public or private community treatment system nearby they will have to connect so that means if i was going to build a new house next door to a, a developed subdivision that had a good uh operating plant that had capacity the permit office here could say no mr Ida, you can't put in a MODAD unit, a little individual unit, you're going to have to connect to that subdivision. He has capacity and he wants you as a customer. So it, it does that too. Again, if you've got a private operator that's running a good plant, it's going to reward would there, him. Would there be a distance? Oh, for, absolutely. I mean, it, yeah, if at it's some too, point, you got to say it's not worth absolutely. it. Absolutely. This is a, what I was thinking of is if, it's, if he had Next gravity door. sewer close enough that was deep enough where I could I run my tail line and connect to it. Okay. Uh, and you know this is all you know we're going to use common sense if it's 2,000 feet away that's not practical it's not practical to make somebody connect to that sure. but if he's 200 feet away yeah he that's and the sewer's deep enough you know again there'll be extenuating circumstances right, sometimes yeah. where yeah he he'd have to put in a, a, a pump like mr. Bubba's dealing with and pump it up the hill to get into the plant well you may not want to require somebody to do that and you have the authority to not require that. Uh, the way this ordinance is written is every community plant and every commercial plant would be inspected every three years. So, you know, if they know that you're coming in four months, they're going to make sure that plant is up to snuff and it's operating properly. Even if they hadn't been uh, maybe doing what they should have for the two years and eight months leading up to that. Uh, there are provisions in here for fines. If you got somebody that just refuses to do what they should be doing, you would have the authority to fine them. And yeah, well that we've already put that in there, but no building permits would be issued where you have a community system that's not meeting its permit. There's also some provisions in here. You may have a, a serious problem that doesn't cost a whole bunch of money to fix. Maybe a new chlorinator and some chlorination equipment. The operator or owner won't fix it. You have, you would, it would give you the authority to go in and fix it. And how, whatever you would do after that, lean the, the property or by some legal means try to recover your money from the from the developer or sewer operator actually owner operator but that would be so it would give you the you know some of these problems would be too big the parish 
can't afford to go fix it. But if there's something that is a you know a pretty serious health threat and you do have the means to fix it, it would give you the the option to do that. So that's all the high points. Uh, so I mean, we I, that's good. We've all seen the high points. I mean, we've got I've got a the revised version. I think that that, that was I think Eddie did a little more. Eddie and Miss Dar did a little more work onto it since the one we had last week or two weeks ago. Let's take it home and, you know, next two weeks from now, we'll start going through some of these sections and we'll get to some of those parts where we have concerns about, you know, those common sense aspects and we can look at those those areas and, uh, and uh, you know, kind of start nailing down some of the things that, that everybody has concern with. I, it, I would like to move forward. I mean, instead of tackling the whole thing at one, if we could maybe... If you could divide it up in like three sections or something, and oh, we could you, just do you, you say could. one section, you know what? That you way, I, instead of having to just digest it all at one time, mm -hmm. we could just take three small steps and, and get to the, where, it, where it is. Which leads me to one, my last question. When I was with the city of Denham Springs and we expanded Denham Springs Sewer District 1, we looked at all these individual plants and we said, oh, we're going to take those in. So we calculated that as income when we went and bonded. $20 million to build a facility. We said, okay, you know, it'll pay for it. We'll get the money back in 20 years or something like that. Then we ran into a problem where we got to take it over. They said, oh, we own this. Now we're going to charge the city $1,000 every lot. So, I mean, would this help us? Absolutely. You know, I mean, 100%. because use the revenue of these package plants without having to pit, spend money to acquire them. That's right. To invest money to get a return on that money because like you remember John we had plant we had systems that we paid for that were nothing but a liability they we didn't had no value. That. I, I mean, mean it was uh and we had some of them that changed their minds after the fact had told us one thing going in and then once we had secured the bonds and started work so with this ordinance it, yeah, it absolutely some addresses can we that. put something like that in there to, you know it it it, it, it would not they can they they would have an option they can own it and operate it or they can give it to the parish or Utah. give it that's, that's the way it's currently written okay so it would eliminate that that was a hard blow i mean yes it was it's and it would have been different if these plants were in good shape well run that's but, different but they wouldn't we wouldn't have expanded they, had they been exactly. in good shape and that's right and the sewer district well, had the same one, problem the sewer district. oh go ahead bob i'm sorry one thing about the city when they expanded it was a good deal, but they ran out of money too quick. They've got well. That's where our money went. That, we that, these what plans. John was yeah, saying, Mr. Bubba, that's one of the reasons well, why I mean, they that's, that's did. That's not our problem. It was the city's problem. You're right. And they still having people that's wanting the sewer. Well, the Gorn Hood Road. That's a prime example. They had to stop right there at 16. They couldn't go on across because they didn't have the money. Now we've got a force main coming all the way from a subdivision in the back and tying into that line. And the people are really upset with that too. Mm -hmm. I mean. But guys, y'all feel free to, if you know, in your, if you, other than here, if you want to come by and talk about okay it, just give me a call. And I, can, well, I, mean, I, I, think, I think we can, I think we can study in three sections. I don't think we can adopt it in three sections because they're all dependent on every other thing to make it work. I don't know that. I think we can, we can work on it in sections. I'm not sure it's adoptable in sections. Yeah. You'd have to, you know, you might could do something like, only the community systems and then do the commercial later or yeah. you might that's do something what, like if that. If you, you don't, know. you know, that's what I was thinking. Yeah. Or the plants over so many well, residents. Over so, certain sizes. Over certain sizes, yeah. do those first and then the yeah, ones under could. certain size. Okay. Is there anybody else who wants to come in on this? We got one more item on the agenda we need to address. You want to come up and speak, Mr. Yeah, Purple Marshall? <laughs> Gaden Smith, 9295 North Street. This sounds all fine and dandy about private industry come within 200 feet of my house. I got a tie in the sewer. That's $5,000 I got to come up with. Now I'm on a monopoly. I got to pay what he wants. And they generally charge by the, uh, your water is $25, add $75 to it. If my I wash my car, 
I'm paying for water going down the sewer that's not going down the sewer, so it costs me more money. I understand we got to clean the mess up, so to speak, but you need to think about these uh, 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 poor people out there, unless you're trying to make a gated community in Livingston Parish that says, if you don't live in under $250,000 home, move. Because, I mean, some people can't afford this. I mean, you're talking a lot of money to lay down a line for 200 feet to tie into private industry. And I talked to a gentleman in the Denham Springs Council, and he says, utilities are good. We make money off of utilities. So it's not an issue of health, it's an issue of making money. And I realize there's, you know, you're not going to be able to handle everything. And you're not going to be able to cover everything. But golly gee whiz, think about the people out there that live in paycheck to paycheck that don't have the money. Uh, I, look, I, I don't, nobody disagree with what you're saying. I think, I think if you read the ordinance, they're, they're, it addresses people having to tie in. The main gist of the ordinance, though, is to address people that are already tied to systems that aren't functioning properly. That's the main purpose of what we're trying to address. I understand, but he said if you pass by my subdivision within so many feet, I got to tie into it. My brother had a, 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 my sister had a horse on my brother's property. That horse broke that water line. He had two water bills, one for 90 and one for $110. That would have been doubled on a sewer bill. Currently, where's your sewer going now? I have, a, 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 it's, it's going in the ditch, but I flush my toilet once a day, maybe twice a day, and I wash my clothes once a week. So you, Modad. Dis you discharge straight into your yes, ditch? Yes, Modad. And I, and I understand tying in, I understand. But then that company comes along and says, oh, we got to tell you, got to tie in. It's going to cost you $800 just to tie in. Well, wait a minute. Who's making the money? Him? Or is he charging me the exact cost that it costs to tie in? Which we know companies don't do that. They're in the business to make money. And well, they'll. Yeah, I know when I was with the city, utilities like water, gas, they do tend to make a little money on those sewer they lose money it's well money. that's not I mean, what I, this gentleman in I mean, uh that's from from my history of being denim springs in told me he said they make money on it well, I don't know the so with that said okay. thank you <laughs> just think about the poor people that's all i can say or put the sign up again <clears throat> Derek Murphy, 17154 Murphy Lane. Look, uh, the drainage, the sewer district, uh, for a long time, has been these private plants. They get dilapidated. We have impaired waterways all throughout Livingston Parish. Now, at least up front, it can be determined that the sewer district takes it over or that we can actually hold some people accountable to their discharges. Uh, the sewer district is actually very progressive. Uh, I know some of you guys have some influence. Eddie doesn't work with them, but they're very progressive. They have mobile plants trying to expand the district out, get sewer out of the ditches, get sewer out of you know out of where our kids play or whatever, get it out of our waterways. Uh, so I can tell you, dealing with this on a on a professional level as well, but as a citizen of this parish, I think it's good to be progressive. I think it's good to expand the sewer. We're, we're a lot further along than a lot of parishes. We're behind a lot of parishes. But we're all headed in the right direction. That's one thing I have been impressed with is the sewer districts and looking at how they put together. They're working with developers coming in. They're working with companies. They're working with businesses. They want the customers. And they're, they're helping them. Uh, they're making it economically feasible for, for those companies to help build the infrastructure of the parish. And that's something that a lot of places you don't have. So it's working private, working with public, putting it together, showing the benefits for, for those entities to come in, but also benefits for the district, for the people, and uh, trying to get some of the impaired waterways fixed and different things because of discharges. So uh, anything that we can do to head in that direction is a good Let me thing. ask you a question, and maybe you and Eddie can answer this as well. 
I know on Jubin Road, when when they from the Interstate to Florida Boulevard, when the state was going to widen Jubin Road uh, and spend a lot of money to really improve our traffic, their number one and maybe you can help me with this. It was it not their number one concern was we are not widening Jubin Road. We're not going to expand improve traffic until you get the crap out of the ditches on on Juvin Road. So because of the federal funding, John, they couldn't even move forward with it until we figured out there was MoDads right. dumping. Well, but you know, so we had the and DOTD actually gave the parish a uh, million dollars to go toward that project that we just finished two months ago. So now we have community sewer. And I understand it, it costs right money now. because sometimes they charge for water and sewer, as you talked about. And the average but, sewer bill is uh, from. 35 to 50 bucks is about what the you know, and, utility companies are And for years, them. people didn't even, when you have a boat at, you don't pay a monthly fee. I mean, just electricity to run the pump if your pump's working. Right. And so I can understand, but it, I guess what I'm saying is we have garbage pickup to get the garbage out. You make people pay that in the city, they do. And I don't know if the parish mandates garbage pickup at certain times, but they don't. But you know, sewer, if it, you just can't let it back up. You got to get it out. In multiple parishes, even like in Ascension. I, mean, I guess they, you know we, as 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 council members, we should be ever so cautious not to put a heavy financial burden on people. And that, I mean that's hard to do. But for the future, we've got to require people to get their sewer into a a, a, a treatment facility so it can get treated correctly. So to get federal funding for highways and stuff well like i said probably 42 and 73 over in Ascension parish was the same kind of deal they it, open, it was open ditches they wouldn't no dads it. uh they ended up putting big sewer systems in and to be progressive but also because of some of the funding issues that they had and they helped, helped you work said that the out. state gave a million dollars to, to the parish i believe to put quality sewer in there to, to get to get the juvenile road thing done to get the crap out of the ditch hey <laughs> Okay. Sorry, I shouldn't say. Come that. on, come on up, Bubba. We got one item on there that's dear, near and dear to Mr. Bubba Harris's heart. We're gonna have to talk about it, and he deserves more than five minutes, but he might not get much more than that. <laughs> John, we have 9421 North Street, Dell Springs. I've listened to all of it, and really, I'm almost embarrassed. We talk about the sewage problem, and it is a sewage problem. But you know, in my particular situation, I fought a sewage problem for five years. And they still have repercussions for the raw sewage in my yard from a particular trailer park that y'all are all familiar with. And not one person in Livingston Parish would put out an effort to curve the issue. Just recently, I had to have 25 trees cut down because the raw sewage actually had been there that long that killed the trees. And now the parish wants to make all these standards, but yet before this particular person with Mexican whiskey, I guess, that he bought, managed to get away with this. And now he is tied into, quote, city sewage. But there was no inspections. The old septic tanks are still there. They haven't been cleaned out. They haven't been filled in with sand. There's no standards in there. And to the best of my knowledge, there is no operator that has any control of the plant that is supposed to be dumping sewage. Now, I have a MODAD, which MODADs do not work. The little pump runs. They say you can drink water out of the tailpipe. I'll challenge anybody to drink the water out of the tailpipe of my MoDad. <laughs> and when they ran the main forced main in front of my house, I still have the contract because I thought they were going to tie in our subdivision. And they said no. That supposedly, if they ever do, since I gave them the right of way through my property, I should be able to quote tie in free. That was the payoff, which I don't know if that'll ever take place. But if you do things, let's do it fair for everybody. And if there is a law, let's enforce that law. If there's no law, 
then let's forget about it. But let's not be picky. Let's not play politics. Let's do what's right by everybody. And if a person's held accountable, make him be accountable. This gentleman was fined several times with DEQ and the quote Livingston Sewer Department and Livingston Health Department and he has never had to pay one of those fines. And I hate to say it, he's akin to one of the councilmen here. Thank you. Okay, Bob. Okay. Uh, you want to talk about your item? Yeah. We're getting right back to the same thing we discussed earlier on grind the pumps. And uh, people don't understand about the city of Walker, they have grinder pumps. And when they break, the city takes care of it for the, the residents there. But this one location that I'm speaking of, the people have to take care of. It. It's very costly. And what I'm really pushing for is I want to pass an ordinance. Whereas, where there's ground to pump and a realtor's trying to sell the property, they've got to tell the people that's buying the property that there's grinder pumps there. And it's their responsibility because these people in that particular subdivision were never told, you know, that there was grinder pumps that they had to maintain. And that's, that's about it. That's what else can I say? Yeah, we, so, I mean, we just need to talk to Mr. Booty and figure out what we can and can't do in that particular situation. And yeah. I don't think we can move forward. If we, if we get to go ahead, I think that's something that I don't think there'll be much opposition to. Well, that, on, the, uh, on the disclosure along those lines, if that's, if that's the only, something. The only that, problem I can see with the new sewer district is they're going to run a forest main right down the Wax Road all the way to that new development out close to uh, Greystone. And there's no way these people can tie into it because it is a force man. And we don't want to pump all that back in their house for sure. Right. Uh, I got you. All right. Anything else we need to discuss tonight? Look for a motion to adjourn. <clears throat> I'll make that motion. You got a motion, Mr. Mack. Do I have a second? A second. Second by Mr. Waskin. Any opposition? Thank you.